Hey, what's up, you guys? Marty Schwartz here, guitarjams.com, and give you guys a, a cool little blues lick. I was listening to some buddy guy the other day and heard some similar kind of stuff. I mean, obviously, all the guitar blues guitar legends do a similar lick to what I'm going to show you right in the power zone, uh, like I like to call it. Uh, I have even more cool blues licks. They're not on YouTube, though. You can actually click the link right down there and check them out. There's a Stevie Ray Vaughan, a B.B. King, and an Eric Clapton style uh, inspired by Lick Lessons link down there. You can check it out. But let's zoom in, and I'm going to show you some cool concepts that you can add to your arsenal and uh, hopefully have fun doing it. So here we go. So this lick I am going to show you is right in the pentatonic, the D minor pentatonic scale, so the root is right here on the 10th fret of the E string. Just like that. And the first thing we're going to do is it's like one of those great uh, repeating licks. You can repeat it, repeat it, and then, you know, modify it and build a motif off of it, which is a big part of blues soloing. So we're going to bend this uh, 12th fret G string right here and I'm going to actually use my ring finger and my middle finger together for just for strength and accuracy. Easier to control the bend than just with one finger. Okay, so we're going to bend that up. Then we're going to play the 10th fret on the B string, which is actually the same note as this bent up a whole step. Okay, so we bend this up. And then when I hit this note though, this is coming off. So we're not gonna hear them together in this particular example. And the way to not get that G to ring out, after you take your finger off, part of it can be muting with your right hand. And then another part, which is kind of an unconscious uh, thing, is the tip of the index finger can kind of mute that G string. I'm not playing the G string, but it's kind of right there to mute. Okay? So what I'm doing is I'm doing one down strum, almost like a drag, dragging the pick over to the next note. Then I'm going to the 13th fret of the B, and I'm doing an up pick on that. have that repeating lick. Just remember though, to build that up, you gotta practice it super slow. And when I say take a lick and then try and modify it or take a lick, internalize it, and then turn it in, you know, play it backwards, play it faster, double up on one of the notes, you can take these as little springboards to come up with your own licks. So one is instead of going to that 13 on the B, you just double up on that 10 of the B. mix between the two. Ah, I got confused. And then finally, I really like going into the 13th fret bend up a whole step to the root. And what I do to do that, oh, I said doo-doo, uh, 
I switch to my ring finger. So you're using your, I use my pinky when I'm doing this. And then if I'm gonna eventually go to that bend, I switch it to my ring finger. I have seen guys be able to bend with their pinky and ring. I've just never done it. And to get some of that vibrato, I get asked about vibrato all the time. Uh, one thing if you're kind of a beginner and you're still trying to get that vibrato, you can kind of think of it as shake the neck and then the balance of the string vibrating off your, off your finger is going to help. But if you need, if you really want to start working on it, one tip that has helped me and helped students when I've taught them is to kind of shake the neck. You're not, the shaking the neck's not giving you vibrato. It's all about the string pitch moving back and forth. But shaking the neck can kind of help you get that feel. Once again, all right, that was it. Hope you enjoyed it. Add it to your arsenal, modify it, turn one lick into a hundred different licks if you can, uh, and uh, hopefully you enjoyed yourself, got something out of it. I've got even more of those bonus licks in that link right down there. Uh, or I'll see you in another uh, YouTube lesson real soon. Take care. See you later.